Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to talk about these uh, pictures that NASA recently sent out. And uh, we're going to title this uh, article, it actually comes from the Institute of Creation Research, that stars defy the Big Bang. And I'll show you what I mean by this. But check this out. Um, if you've been following the news, man, this is all over right now about these images that recently came up from NASA. And when I look at this thing, um, I think of a creator. It looks like a painting, in my opinion. It looks like maybe some mountains or something. Um, but it, it's pretty incredible. And uh, I just kind of wanted to go through it here, show you my thoughts, uh, is because uh, either there was a big bang that happened or everything uh, was created. And man, when I look at these images, it just screams uh, creation to me. So uh, let's jump into this. Uh, I actually saw this on Twitter the other day. Uh, this guy's awesome, Act 17 Apologetics. And uh, I love listening to this guy. But he, uh, he put out some really good examples. He says, um, saying the Big Bang created the universe is like saying the typewriter wrote to kill a mockingbird. And, uh, or the paintbrush painted Starry Night. Starry Night or the guitar played the solos and Comfortably Numb. I actually don't know what that song is. Um, but it's so true. Like, what would it take um, to, to any book, whether it's it's the Bible or whatever book you read, that you just lay out these letters and they magically just kind of appear together on the pages? I would say that, that there would have to be some type of intelligent intervention in order for that to happen. It couldn't have just evolved or some big bang just exploded and all this happened. So let's jump into this. Uh, and actually, there's a lot of um, scriptures in the Bible that talk about this, that God's stretching out his hand and creating the heavens. And this is what it says in Psalm 147.4. I might be to bed, beat a, a dead horse here, uh, but we're going to have a few scriptures here. And I just, I think it's, it's great. He says, uh, he telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. So if you look at this picture, just think about that for a second. There are trillions, I don't know what the estimation is, but there's just trillions of stars and God knows them by name. And then if you look at just the earth and how many people there are, just a few billion people, and he knows all of us, and we're so much more important than the stars. And man, we're just so small, but the universe is just, it's so, um, it's so massive and expansive. And uh, we're just so much more important by that. But he knows every single star by their name, and he knows your name, and you're so much more important than that. Look at this. Who covers thyself with lights as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and so we talk about this time about um, light years, and when God created everything, he stretched it out. That's what it says he did. I'm going to show you more scriptures here in just a second. But look at this. This is another one of the pictures that uh, that came out. Um, no idea what this is. It's just, it's just incredible. And to me, it just looks like mountains and clouds, and you see the stars behind it. And it just looks like a painting, like someone just, you know, painted it with a brush or something. It's, it's absolutely incredible. It says, Isaiah 40:22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. I just get goosebumps reading these scriptures. This, this all-powerful, this omniscient, omnipotent, uh, omnipresent being just being able to create everything, just like that. And it's, it's quite terrifying if you think about it. It's, it's amazing how God can just snap his fingers and it's all gone. If he can snap all of his, his fingers... And everything's just back to where it was. It's just, it's absolutely incredible. Look at this. This is another image um, that was released by, uh, by NASA. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. Look at this picture that just came out. Pretty awesome. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Look at this picture. This is absolutely amazing. This thing just screams creation. Even before I was a Christian and I was in school and all they teach about is, is evolution. And I was like, none of this makes sense. To me, this just looks designed. And if, if you get nothing out of this, um, let's just pretend that the Bible doesn't exist just for a second. And I'm just trying to say, hey, either creator or Big Bang, one or the other. Um, and what you hear in the news, everything is just one-sided. And you saw that article um, from Acts uh, 17 Apologetics, and it talks about the Big Bang and billions of years. And it's always just billions of years. But I hold a position. Um, it says that God created everything in six days, and the earth is probably about 6,000 years old. And there's a lot of evidence. Um, you'll probably get a, a lot of hate mail in the comments below. That's fine. But watch my playlist. There's a lot of, of evidence for a young earth, or I would say younger earth. 6,000 years is uh, actually a lot of years. Jeremiah 10, 12, he hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. So all throughout the Bible, God created the heavens and the earth and he stretched them out with his hands. That's what he did. So let's jump into this article. This comes from the Institute of Creation Research. Uh, they're based out of Texas. It's an awesome um, website. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and do it. But this guy who wrote this article, um, a very prolific figure, PhD, um, go back and read it for yourself. But this is what it says. 
just kind of in regards to what's happened with the NASA pictures. And you only hear one side. It's always a secular side. Oh, it's just billions of years old, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's, here's the other side of the information. Um, I don't want to teach you uh, what to think. Um, I think schools, they indoctrinate kids. They don't educate them. You only hear one side of the argument. And education is learning all sides. And that's what I'm a proponent of, is I think we should teach both sides. You either teach both sides or you teach none. And that's what I think. Recent measurements by astronomers at the University of Cologne, Germany, I'll probably have all these names mixed up, um, at Masaryk University or Czech Republic have shown that a fast moving star orbits the heart of our Milky Way galaxy in just four years. Teasing out this information was an impressive technical feat that required nearly 20 years worth of data. This fast moving star dubbed S S4716 and others like it are problematic for evolutionary astronomers. Astronomers, astronomers think that supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A is located at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Some stars orbit very closely to SGRA. These have been dubbed S stars because of their close association to SGRA. Some of the orbits of these S stars around SGRA are shown in this image. And you can um, go to that website. I have a link and you can look at the image in the article that it cites. The astronomers were surprised by S4716's short orbit. Lead author and astrophysicist Floyd Pesker said, for a star, and this guy um, this is an evolutionist, he's not a creation science, for a star to be a stable orbit so close and fast in the vicinity of a supermassive black hole was completely unexpected and marks the limit that can be observed with traditional telescopes. Astrophysicist Michael Zajic added, the short period compact orbit of S4716 is quite puzzling. Stars cannot form so easily near the black hole. S4716 had to move inwards, for example, by approaching other stars and objects in the S cluster, which caused its orbit to shrink significantly. If S4716 uh, could have formed near SGRA, it must have formed farther away and then somehow migrated closer to SGRA. But based on the comments above, this seems unlikely. The paper's authors speculate on mechanisms that could have made this happen, but they acknowledge that their speculation needs to be verified in more detailed numerical simulations. Another star dubbed S2 or SO-2 orbits the black hole in 16 years and is also problematic for mainstream theorists. Astronomers think it is a young, hot blue main sequence star. Hmm, young. But they acknowledge it is challenging to explain the presence of such a young star in close proximity to a supermassive black hole. By evolutionary reckoning, S2 had to have formed less than 10 million years ago. But the strong tidal forces near S2's present location seem to preclude that it could have form, been formed there. Could it have formed farther away and then migrated inward? Perhaps, but this process would require a very efficient migration process. Yet current understanding of the distribution of stars, however, does not permit such efficient migration. In other words, the migration process should have taken more than 10 million years, longer than the main sequence lifetime of the star. Simply put, by evolutionary reckoning, S2 should not exist. Astronomers have suggested uh, other ways to explain S2, but they acknowledge that none of these possibilities is altogether satisfactory, leaving S0-2 as a paradox of youth in the vicinity of a supermassive black hole. Of course, it doesn't prove that our Milky Way galaxy is just 6,000 years old. Fair enough, as implied by scripture, but it is one of numerous anomalies and paradoxes that suggest the universe is much younger than the age of 13.8 billion years that Big Bang astronomers have assigned to it. They're always adding these billions and millions of years, and that's that's what's unfortunate, and that's what frustrates me, is I don't think you should throw out any dates. Um, just say, hey, we don't know. But I just hated how the textbooks always say millions and billions of years, even though there's no evidence backing that up. Many creationists think that Einstein's theory of relativity is the key to explaining puzzles like distant starlight in a young universe, as well as processes in deep space that seem to man long ages. Relativity theory raises the possibility that clocks in deep space may have ticked much faster than clocks here on Earth. As measured by clocks on Earth, the entire universe is just 6,000 years old, but as measured by clocks in deep space, it could be much older. Such a possibility does not contradict scripture because the days of creation are clearly measured by clocks here on Earth. But even this is the means God used to get distant starlight to us quickly. Evolutionary age assignments still gleam greatly inflated. And I'm surprised the Institute, um, ICR.org, Institute for Creation Research, they don't mention those scriptures where it talks about that God stretched forth his hand. It says that all throughout scripture, Isaiah and the book of Psalms, and um, they're, they're usually right about stuff that I, that I agree with. I'm just surprised they actually didn't throw those uh, scriptures in here, is 
the, to look at this scientific wise, I know we always try to look at stuff like that, but at the end of the day, we have to look at God's word and what it says. And he says, Hey, when he created everything, he stretched it out. Um, so I don't know. I just, I find it interesting. I didn't talk about that. Evidence of relative youth is especially strong here on earth and within our solar system. Yet even in deep space where evidence of great age seems strongest, there are clues that all is not well with the big bang story. This should surprise no one because our universe is not the result of a big bang, but was created by the Lord Jesus Christ just 6,000 years ago. And I actually posted a video, um, I think it was last week's or the week before, just talking about um, even a lot of big time scientists, um, evolutionary, come out and saying, hey, there's a lot of big, ba uh, big gaps in the big bang theory. And we need to start coming up either with a different theory or figure out how these gaps fill in. But to me, I think everything just makes more sense as soon as you put a creator in there. Um, and again, let's let's just pretend that the Bible's gone for a second, and let's just put that word creator there. That's what I'm just trying to focus you on, is just creator. Pretend the Bible doesn't exist and just creator. And then as soon as I can kind of get you on board, say, hmm, okay, you know what? Maybe there, there is a creator. If I look at this house, there had to be a foundation built. There was wood um, and walls and cement and piping and all this stuff. And I wouldn't say that all that stuff popped into existence. I would say, hey, no, you know what? Someone probably created this. I didn't see the being or the person who created this, but it'd be very logical that this house just didn't pop into existence, that someone had to create it. That's all I'm trying to get across is in this apologetics ministry is, hey, let me get you on board with the creator. And then we'll start talking about the scriptures and the Bible, which I think they go hand in hand. But I just kind of like to focus on creator. And then let's just kind of go in and, and talk about the Bible and how all this stuff fills in. But uh, I think it's pretty clear. There's a lot of evidence out there. If you look at the Answers in Genesis and Institute for Creation Research, there's a lot of other websites that talk about the evidence that it's probably under 10,000 years old, uh, the earth is. And I agree that it's probably around 6,000. But uh, there is a lot of evidence out there supporting that. So that's all. I just kind of wanted to show the other point of view. I just don't think this view gets pointed out there enough. It's always just one sided. Just talking about evolution, Big Bang, billions of years. That's all you ever hear. Um, even you go through National Geographic and all these magazines and books in the library, that's all they hear all throughout school. And I was kind of frustrated when I first started studying about this stuff after high school. I'm like, wow, this is this seems pretty logical. There's people with PhDs and very smart people um, just kind of explaining this stuff. So that's it. I appreciate you guys tuning in. This is our main segment. Uh, comes out every Monday. And then uh, I'm going to start putting out a couple more shorts throughout the week. I'm um, just talking about stuff as well. So that's it. Appreciate it. See you guys next week.